All right, so the last type of attenuator I'd like to talk about is one designed with ordinary power resistors. These can be metal oxide film or some other resistor technology. The only caution would be not to use a wire wound resistor because they're going to have some inductance as well. So when we talk about attenuators, there's two different types. On the left side, you see what's called the T attenuator. This is the most common topology. And on the right side, you see a pi attenuator. It's in the shape of a pi. Now, I like this particular calculator because it has a slide here. And all you have to do is drag the slide over. And you see the dial move. Let me kind of zoom in on that. and it shows you the actual attenuator level and it's changing the resistor values for both the pi and the T configuration. So if we want to design let's say a, a 10 dB attenuator, okay, we move the slide to 10 dB and then if we want to design a T attenuator then these are my resistor values 26.1 and 34.8 and okay so this is actually a 10 dB attenuator and what I've done here is I used a combination of series and parallel resistors and the advantage of this is that you would increase the power handling capabilities so for the for the 34 ohms I use three 100 ohm resistors as you can see there that gives me 33.3 ohms so it's pretty close to 34 um, actually the attenuation on this if you calculate it and carry out the zeros it's about 10.4 db uh, but we're going to call it a, a 10 db attenuator so this is a nice tool it has a slide Okay, it shows the decibel level, and then it shows the resistance values for both the T and Pi configuration. So I'm going to keep my radio set to 6 watts, and this is a 10 dB attenuator. So remember 10 dB multiplying factor 0.1, so we should see about... 600 milliwatts or so on the output. Okay, so now we have the attenuator in line. Uh, this particular attenuator is a T topology. So you have two series resistors and one going to ground. And as I said, I uh, used a combination of two different series resistors to give me the 26.7 ohms and then a combination of parallel resistors to give me the 3.3 ohms. So remember we were at 6 watts. This is 10 dB. So the multiplying factor here is 0.1. So 6 watts times 0.1. We should get somewhere around 600 milliwatts or so. So I put this back to the 5 watt scale here. That's the lower scale here. So there's 500 milliwatts, should be somewhere around there. We do have uh, some tolerances to consider as well. These are not uh, high tolerance resistors, but let's see what we get. Okay, so we expected about 600 milliwatts. We got a little over 500 milliwatts, so, so not bad. If you use uh, precision components, you probably get a little better result. And let's also uh, take a look at the SWR since the component values that were calculated were for 50 ohms. Um, that's selected by the chart. That's the default. There are some calculators online where you can change the characteristic impedance, but this particular one is 50 ohms um, to match the RF system that we're using here 
it's all 50 ohm output but let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at the SWRs you can see it's very well matched it, it's hardly moving at all so anyway that's the demonstration on how to build your own attenuator using power resistors if we go back to the website here you can see the two configurations and the resistor values I chose are around minus uh, 10.4 dB um, I used a 22 ohm and 4.7 ohm resistor in series that gave me the 26.7 and then as I said I combined uh, 300 ohm resistors to give me the 33 ohms so that's the demonstration as I said there's a lot of these calculators online different types I happen to like this one with the slide um, but you can go out there and search yourself you'll find there are many different types makes the calculation very easy so this is the RF man I hope this helps the intent of this is anyone that has a CB that's peaked at say 6 watts or has a high output transceiver that's 80 or 100 watts that if you're gonna go ahead and use these radios to drive the LD MOS amplifiers remember that a single LD MOS device takes about one watt, a dual about one and a half, maybe two watts, depending on your radio. So you need to use the proper attenuation, and you've got a number of different choices depending on your radio and your power output. You can use an inline attenuator, as I demonstrated. They come in a lot of different sizes and wattage ratings, all the way up to 100 watts. You can use an attenuator pad, same thing. These are easy to use. They're all already matched to 50 ohms. Or if you have a, a smaller radio, let's say a, a 6 watt output, you can go ahead and build your own attenuator. Of course, I built this on a breadboard. Um, I don't recommend that you do that. I just uh, put it together quickly for demonstration purposes. But if you're going to build this, you want to put it on a piece of copper clad, Keep the leads as short as possible um, so that you don't get uh, any stray emissions or, or stray effects. There's, there's a lot of stray inductance there from the lead lens, things like that. So you'd make those leads as short as possible. But again, I just put this together quickly on a breadboard just to demonstrate the principle. Um, and uh, as I said, you can, you can build this on a piece of copper clad board and get very good results with it. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. RF man.